Hey there, and welcome to the Life After Losses video blog where I try to share some life lessons and observations as a double widower. Today we're going to take a journey through time, my time specifically, but I have a feeling you might see some of yourself in the story too. We're going to talk about those dates on the calendar that seem to hold our entire life story of significant milestones. For me, that's October. It's a month filled with moments of incredible joy, feelings of heart-wrenching loss, and everything in between. But this isn't just about my story, it's about how we all navigate the ups and downs of life, how we learn to embrace both the laughter and the tears, and how we can grow stronger through it all. Whether you're dealing with your own emotional October or any other month, or if you're just trying to make sense of life's roller coaster, I think you'll find something here that speaks to you. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and let's dive into this journey together. So here's my story of dancing through October's rain. In entry number 198, Dancing in October's Rain. Have you ever found yourself surrounded by dates on a calendar with so much significance to your life story? I have, that's me in the month of October. It's hard to believe I moved into the first house I bought 30 years ago this month. The home and the promise of a lifetime with my first husband made me feel like the world was in my hands. A few months later, the diagnosis was made, and a few months after that, I was alone. 26 years ago, I met my second husband while on a business trip while living and working in Memphis. Uh, what started as a tour of a new city ended with a request for a date. We were sweating in three-piece tuxedos a year later during our outdoor commitment ceremony on a scorching Santa Ana wind-driven 87-degree day. Five years later, we finalized the adoption of our two children surrounded by our friends and family. Four years later, registered domestic partnerships be damned, we married legally in a small ceremony in our backyard, our daughter the flower girl and her son the ring bearer. We experienced an unexpected winter storm dumping over two feet of snow three years later. It's a first for me. And without power or heat for two days, my Southern Californian background did not prepare me for a New England nor'easter. Each of these events has the power to bring a smile to my face or tears to my eyes, or as usually happens, a combination of both. Here's the thing. It's perfectly normal to have conflicting emotions when reflecting on our memories. In the early stages of my grief, these events would act like a, an emotional one-two punch for Mike Tyson. I lamented about what I'd lost and what I, we had. I'd cry not for the memory itself, but for the loss of what made that memory so special in the first place. One of the mistakes I made early on was judging my emotions. And it wasn't until I began working on my personal development that I realized that I could change my personal narrative about these events and that my emotions were normal. And I've shared in this space before how adjusting our mindset can alter our reactions. You know, when I applied those skills to October's past, I found that I could focus on the memories that made those days so special, not on the loss itself. And I can see the day that we moved into our home new 30 years ago and meeting our new neighbors who were like an extended family. I can see the promise of taking that blank canvas of a backyard and designing something unique. And I could smile. And I can see the empty sun-drenched seats in the backyard on that hot day 25 years ago. The guests chose the side of the jade. And I can hear us singing down the aisle and feel the love in that moment. And I can smile and hold tears in my eyes celebrating the love we shared with ourselves, our friends, and family that day. You know, when it comes to my memories or my life in general, I can have two reactions. I either laugh or cry. And laughing is a hell of a lot more enjoyable. But I also believe that tears are healing and healthy responses to emotions. Why have the reaction if it's not natural, right? My experiences have made me more willing to share those emotions and tears, whether tears of sorrow or tears of joy. I work to be in tune with my feelings, and I've learned not to judge them. I acknowledge them and I address them when I feel that they're holding me back from living my life. I still feel the losses. Obviously, I still carry them with me, or I couldn't share this journey with you. And as I navigate through another October, I find myself embracing the complexity of my emotions. So those dates on the calendar are no longer just reminders of what was or what could have been. They've become something that reminds me of my resilience and growth. Now, I've shared before that each memory be it marked by joy or sorrow, has shaped me into who I am today. And I've learned it's okay to laugh and cry, sometimes in the same breath. You know, Vivian Green said, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass, it's learning to dance in the rain. 
So here I am, dancing through October, honoring my past, cherishing my present, and looking forward to whatever the future may bring. After all, isn't that what living fully is all about? Thanks for watching. <laughs>